a team of several men secured their homemade rocket to scaffolding. They hoped their black powder ratios were correct and their projectile would be the one that stayed airborne the longest. They were participating in Thailand's Rocket Festival, and this is Legends from the Pacific. Aloha, and thank you for joining us. This is Legends from the Pacific, episode 142. That's the answer. Thailand's Rocket Festival. I am Kamuela Kaneshiro, a native Hawaiian professional writer, speaker, and Comic-Con panelist with extensive film and television experience. I study mythology, I've encountered unusual things, and I'm a geek. In the beginning, there was the Pacific Ocean. A canoe broke the horizon, piloted by Pele a beautiful Polynesian maiden who dominated the waves until she felt safe to stop. The audiobook of our Legends from the Pacific Book 1 is now available, narrated by multi-award-winning voice actress Emily Wu Zeller. Emily has worked at anime, the video game Cyberpunk 2077, and over 500 audiobooks including Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back from a certain point of view. Just click the link in our show notes to purchase our audiobook and enjoy Emily telling our stories today. My apologies for not posting an episode last week. This episode and our Patreon exclusive episode took longer to research. Nonetheless, I feel you'll enjoy this episode as well as our Patreon exclusive episode, which is another story of the Hawaiian demigod brothers Kana and Nihue. As always, I appreciate your understanding and patience. Later in this episode, your featured song in Hawaiian word. But first, let me share with you Thailand's Rocket Festival. As usual, I apologize for any mispronounced names or words and appreciate your understanding. Thailand's Rocket Festival is a three-day celebration with beauty pageants, parades, concerts, food, and alcohol, though people mainly drink beer. Everything builds to the final day where teams construct homemade rockets. These rockets are usually made from PVC piping and fueled by black powder. The winning team is whoever's rocket stayed airborne the longest. It should be noted, the rockets are equipped with parachutes, which count towards its total airtime. But rockets have exploded on the ground, causing injury. When this happens, the team usually goes into a mud puddle, which is to cool any burns sustained from the mishap. This celebration occurs on the sixth day of the sixth lunar month, which is around May or June, which is telling on how this festival came to be. You see... The festival was to encourage rain and ensure a good harvest. It should also be noted, the festival started before the 19th century version of black powder, so individuals made their own formula, which may have resulted in many injuries. As for how the festival started, there are two stories. During the time when Buddha's incarnation was the king of toads, His teachings drew many inhabitants, including the Sky Dwellers. The Sky King wondered what happened to his subjects. When he needed to walk the land, he discovered they now followed Buddha. The infuriated Sky King stopped the rain. The land dried, and the great Naga, or serpent, ruler of oceans and dweller of the great Mekong River, declared war on the deity. However, Buddha... The Toad King warned Naga he was no match for the Sky King. Naga didn't care, and with his army, attacked. The Toad King was correct. The Sky King defeated Naga. As Naga tended his wounds, the Toad King called scorpions, centipedes, and other insects to cover the ground. When the Sky King needed to walk the land, the creatures would sting, bite, and snap his feet. With nowhere for the Sky King to walk, He made an agreement with the Toad King that the land would be clear for him to walk. In return, rockets breaking the sky would remind the Sky King to send the rain, while flying kites would signal the land had enough rain. In ancient times, a king surveyed the dry land. 
After mystics failed contacting the Sky King for rain, the monarch believed rockets may get the Sky King to notice the parched lands and send rain. The king sent invitations for a rocket contest. Whoever's rocket reached the highest won half the king's land and would marry the princess. The princess was the most beautiful woman of the land and was secretly seen a handsome prince. When he told his family of his beloved, they informed him of the contest, and he did not receive an invitation. The prince didn't care and entered the contest. Word of the contest and the beautiful princess spread throughout our realm and the underworld, where a Naga prince, desiring to see the princess, took the form of an albino squirrel. When the princess learned of the contest, she was torn between the love of her prince and her father, and the parched lands. She agreed with her father's request to marry the winner and wished it to be her prince. As the king started the contest, the princess's beauty drew the Naga prince closer. She saw the albino squirrel and sent her hunter to capture it. The hunter startled the Naga prince and he ran. In the marketplace, the Naga prince felt safe and enjoyed a fig. A dart hit him. As he lost consciousness, he wished his squirrel meat would fill several carts. The hunter retrieved the squirrel, and the albino squirrel was dead. However, the hunter realized the squirrel had more meat than it seemed. At the contest, the princess wished her prince luck as he lit his rocket. It misfired, and the princess held her tears. As the next contestant readied his rocket, the prince mounted his great horse and raced to a renowned mystic. When the contest ended, a winner was announced. However, he was a relative of the king and the wedding was cancelled. The princess cried with joy and wished for a way to contact her beloved. Before the crowds dispersed, the hunter got everyone's attention. He apologized to the princess for killing her albino squirrel, but it produced several carts of meat which was shared by all except widows, for it was the custom. As the contest results spread across our land, the Naga prince's death spread across the underworld. His father, the Naga king, was infuriated and cursed all who ate his son's meat. Meanwhile, the prince stopped his horse outside the mystic's home. Greetings, young prince. The mystic approached. You knew I'd come the prince said, and know what I wish to ask of you. Yes, young one, which is why I greet you before you dismount. While the contest is over, the king refused your princess to the winner. She remains unmarried. So how do I make her my wife? That remains hidden, for the royal hunter slayed the Naga prince who was an albino squirrel. Now death shrouds the kingdom, for the Naga king cursed the meat they eat. The prince reared his horse and raced down the road. Their fate is sealed, the mystic thundered. You will join them if you return now. Storm clouds bellowed as he approached a crossroads and charged to his princess. Cooked meat filled the city's air as he located his beloved's detail and dismounted. Soup was poured into a bowl. He called for her. She raised the soup to her lips. He yelled. Her dark eyes fell upon him. She lowered the bowl. He swatted it away and held her. Her maidens gasped and averted their eyes. He apologized while catching his breath. The princess trembled. My love, are you ill? The prince released her. Forgive me. I feared great peril. The princess's eyes widened. Please, tell me what's wrong. Would you like some soup? It's quite good. The prince paled. Was the soup made from an albino squirrel? Yes. Why? Thunder roared. The ground quaked and ruptured. Nagas emerged and attacked. Screaming overtook the thunder as those who ate the meat were killed. The prince grabbed his princess and mounted his horse. The king ordered his guards to engage the naga. Blood seeped from his mouth. A blade protruded from his chest. He turned and collapsed beneath the Naga King mounted on his great horse. The princess cried for her father. The prince held her and dug his heels into his horse. 
and they sped away. The Naga King reared his horse and pursued. Hooves pounded the earth, then their thuds became slopping as water emerged from the ground and flooded the city. Near a swampy area, the Naga King's tail hit them. Their horse whinnied. The prince struggled to gain control, but the princess fell into the water. The princess coughed, gasped, and the Naga King collected her. They submerged into the water, and the slaughter ended. The widows were all who remained of the city. They helped the heartbroken prince, but he didn't eat or drink because his drowning beloved's eyes was all he saw. He died a few days later. However, his spirit wanted vengeance. It soared to the Sky King and gave a speech so moving the Sky King loaned him his army. The prince gained other spirits and led an attack on the underworld. Both sides were equally matched and locked in a stalemate. Light stopped them. Buddha appeared and told each side to forgive each other. They did, and the war ended. Okay, a few things about our second story. Some versions state after the war, no one really knew what to do with the princess's spirit, so she remains in wait until a heavenly being, possibly Buddha, determines her spirit's fate. But it doesn't end there. An extra first section where she and the Naga prince were married in a previous life, but he mistreated her. One day while they were eating figs to avoid starvation, she wished they'd die and never marry in their next life. They died and were reincarnated into the princess and Naga prince. Our astute listeners will recall the Naga prince was killed by the hunter while enjoying figs. A big mahalo nuiloa to our Patreon members, Will and Ollie Geis, Christopher, Meg, Jessica Bullock, Edward Pwetohenki, Felisa H., The Makuli Guy, and of course, Ren Shepard. Your support keeps our show going. If you'd like to support our show, please click the link in our show notes to become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member to enjoy an exclusive monthly Hawaiian story, like the rare story of who the Hawaiian volcano god was before Pele, another adventure of the Hawaiian demigod brothers Kana and Nihue, and other nifty benefits. Your rewards are waiting for you, so become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member today. The Rocket Festival is still very popular, with celebrations occurring in America and other countries for those away from home. Rocket Festival artifacts were displayed in 2005 at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum in recognition of this rocketry custom, which has lasted over thousands of years. And our second story is a very popular tale, which has been retold in media and became a movie. Also, the city sunk by the Naga King became Thailand's famous Red Lotus Lake. So, what we learn? I think it's interesting there's two stories explaining the Rocket Festival. Though I guess you could combine them to make one. When you think about it, our second story explained the Rocket Festival and the creation of the Red Lotus Lake. So I guess there's two things in this episode doing double duty. And finally, when you really stop to think about it, both stories are kind of a long way of explaining how the Rocket Festival started. Talk about a MacGuffin. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating and write a review. I'd really appreciate it as well as our future listeners. Our theme song is Mystery by Tavana, courtesy of High Sessions. Sound effects were by Sound Effects Factory. Our music coordinator is Matt Duffy, a.k.a. DJ Triple Bypass. Links and show notes can be found on our website, legendsfromthepacific.com, including a link to your featured song, which is Don't Stop Me Now by Honoka Katayama, courtesy of High Sessions. Legends from the Pacific was written, produced, and edited by me, Kamuela Kaneshiro. I also wrote our original stories. Your featured Hawaiian word is kaolele. Kaolele means rocket. An example of kaolele is a Guardians of the Galaxy member could be named kaolele raccoon. Once again, kaolele is Hawaiian for rocket. I'm a kaolele man. Or I guess I could say I'm a kaolele kane. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. Thank you once again for listening. Hope you're enjoying Futurama's return on Hulu and Barbenheimer. Mahalo and a hooey ho.